Boom! Pow! Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Guess what? Who in the house? Ryan Buell's here tonight. Ooh. And before we even go there, last time, go ahead. Remember last time? What? Last time he was here. Yeah. Matt Rockhold spilled two beers on your console. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's right. We'll yeah. get to Matt Rockhold. And I know, yes, I know that, there's news. And before that, you weren't there that day, but he was a co-host Barney. with Barney. Barney. Yeah. I speak Barney. You speak Barney. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Barney's here with me, dude. He's always riding steady. Every now and then he wants to come out. He's like, you'll break me out. So. But that particular night, Barney had your number. Well, Barney had everyone's number. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, Barney, was, yeah, he was, he was on fire that night. He was night. on fire that night. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Buell. Thank you. It, We're going to talk about, there's a lot to talk about. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. I saw him the other night at the Halloween party. He goes, Neil, I said, come, please come on the show. Love to have you back. Go, oh, yeah, got, this is the time. I've got stuff I want to say. Okay, by the way, you... I always got stuff I want to say. You texted me yeah, the, a the selfie video, video of you guys. <laughs> yeah. It looked I like you were having a, a good time. I was eating a taco. I, went, <laughs> I don't know. He, you know, he... When he, he's like, he strikes when the time's he right. Strikes. Yeah, yeah. It was like, hey, what's up, Neil? And then he's like, oh, you want to be on the show? And I was like, yeah, I'll go on the show. And boom. Yeah. He's like, our next guest. And so, you know, I was. Here we are. Opportunity knocks, my friend, right? I like it. At a party, past tempo. A lot's gone on in the two or three years since uh, we did the last show. Well, yeah. And we want to find out what's going on. And it's important. And you might get there. Well, we're gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna pull the hard questions. We're gonna hit them. And if we don't right get them all, throat, we're possibly if you don't get them all. You bite them back for the rest of them. Exactly. No, I. I You're gonna have to pull them out of me. Also, by the way, we are today broadcasting live on Santa Cruz Way's Facebook page here in Capitola, California, yeah, in the board village. Boardroom four. Boardroom <laughs> four. <laughs> in brand the, new, uh, brand new Santa Cruz apparel store down here. Uh, we not do. one, not two, not three. <laughs> Four point oh. Uh, the address of this brand new store. It's two zero one Capitol Avenue. It's right it's in the, the heart of Capitol Village. The former Village Mouse location. Which, by the way, Richard Novak told me this building was his first job when he was sixteen years old. That's a grocery it was store. a grocery store where we sit right now. Was where the produce was, and Novak was the produce manager when he was sixteen years old. Uh, he's going to be eighty next year. So that was a that's, long time ago. That's a cool fact. So uh, we're happy to be here. We're, yep. we're really excited to support the community down here in the village with the junior guards, um, with all the events. Yeah, they, junior guards. And, and the toilet guards are pretty tough. So we're really excited Tola, to support that. Tola. And, uh, and you know, I, we live two blocks away, so <laughs> this is our, our spot. Top five things that we need to talk about tonight with you, Mr. Buell, are? Uh, the incredible team we've put together. Boom. Boom. That's one. The power moves we've been making. That's Boom. two. Barney. Boom. Three. Luke Rockhold and why he's not fighting. Four. I like it. And uh, five is some hard-hitting questions about business and why I may not be cut out for corporate America. Boom. That's a good Neil, show. I'm telling you what, I'm just going to sit back and let the games begin. Let's get this. <laughs> um, Let's and by the way, the, game, the game's being enjoyed by this large bottle of, uh, what do they call those things? Magnum. Uh, it's a Magnum, Magnum. of uh, Montupuri. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. 2017. Very nice. Um, Ryan, mean? let's just start real quick. I feel like Buell Wetsuits is uh, making a scene here in Santa Cruz right now. I, I, see, I see a bunch of little kids riding bikes, wearing Buell Wetsuits. Why is that energy um, happening? And explain to me um, how you guys have created this. Because it's I see it every day. You, I feel like you're owning, owning that with your big team. But as far as when you can own the kids, the future is yours. Why is that right now with Buell Wetsuits? Because we're authentic. We're real. This is genuine. I love making Literally, it's like I, I committed my life to making wetsuits, and it, it started with Flea and Barney, and that just, you know, I mean, that drove that passion nail right into me, and I've never slowed down. And like, Explain to the viewers, because some people tune in right now, Santa Cruz Waves is worldwide. There's, there's a lot of people watching from all over the world. Real quick, give them a brief history of why you are where you are today. When you, when you say it began with Barney and Flea, 
explain to the viewers why. I got, you know, uh, I got hired at Hotline Wetsuits as the production manager's assistant. I started out there and I did a few weeks with him and he was like basically like, dude, you're ready for this. I've been hired as a professor up at UCSC and I'm just going to pass this thing to you. How old are you? And I think I was 26 or 27, and maybe 26. And uh, I before that, I'd spent you know about a decade lifeguarding here in town, mm -hmm. and that was my passion. Is still, uh, but I have many more than one passions, and I decided to chase it. And uh, a hotline really allowed me to spread my wings. Why? Because they didn't give me no help. <laughs> Or guidance. <laughs> They're like, good luck. Have yeah, fun. no, I swear to you, my first day in the office, I was in this office with actually no windows on 7th Avenue, and I had a pencil sharpener, a fax machine, and a DOS matrix computer, you know? And like, it was like, what do I even do with this stuff? And I spun around in my chair waiting for a fax to come through, and and the cell phone was born. And all of a sudden my office became the world. And uh, you know, I, I learned on the job. Um, a lot of it was Barney asking for wild things. And I was like, I can do that. And, and the wild things were some crazy wetsuits, whether it was a Batman, Spider-Man. Like there's you nobody it. that's right. ever represented human. Well, I don't know if Barney was actually human. He might've been alien, but <laughs> human and wetsuit together, Barney. There, I mean, to have uh, this kind of muse, a guy who would wear Thor, Thing, uh, the Hulk, Batman, Spider-Man. And uh, dude, he actually, I made him that Batman suit and put the extra flaps coming off the side. And he actually was a superhero. He performed death-defying acts at Mavericks behind the bowl in that fucking wetsuit. I mean, so to make wetsuits for Barney and then see my hard work in print mm -hmm. or on a person yeah, and people talking about it for me it gave me that it, that's it's a buzz and uh you know early kind of success with hotline and really teaching myself and being given that platform by brenda and hotline we had a factory in santa cruz you know when i first mm -hmm. took over we we had like 30 40 employees making wetsuits out there so not only did i get to make my own wetsuits and make custom wetsuits for Barney, but I also managed a production facility and, you know, 10 years later, uh, fast forward and I'm, I'm out in Thailand building my own factory and I'm referencing uh, a lifelong journey of, um, you, this knowledge you, into you were, the you new were, stuff. You were, you were well educated from what you learned. So I had a good teacher. <laughs> no, that sounds funny. But, uh, no, I dedicated my life to it. And if you don't see Barney in the new J-O-B stuff, you're not looking hard enough. I mean, I would suggest everything I did in the past has led me to this. I mean... Is J-O-B a, a, a little bit like Barney? Barney? I mean, a real, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, he is a... I, I see a lot of Barney. And I'm a big fan of J-O-B. He is and, and, and awesome. I, and he is awesome. He owns part of Buell. Uh, he and should. I'm, I'm extremely proud to say he's a part owner and I think that's part of the reason we're authentic and real and we're successful right now is because there's JLB. we're not faking it and Jamie O'Brien folks um you if, you're, if you're not, not a fan, fan if you're not a fan of Jamie O'Brien go on YouTube follow his YouTube channel it's amazing um I, fe I really feel like not only is he a, a Barney sort of like crazy I uh, asked him who his favorite Santa Cruz surfer is and with before I even finished he said Barney well, and you're hired. Second, and, um, second favorite, Rat. And I was like, heck yeah. Dude. Like he knows the history of Santa Cruz is is prevalent around the world. And like you travel the world as a Santa Cruzan and you had people like Richard Schmidt precede you. Uh, you go to Hawaii and you, you, you get a little more uh, love and aloha and high fives. And uh, Santa Cruz and Hawaii have a really good connection. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and uh, Jamie was just recently here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, and so what's he's weird endeared is, himself to the community. Too, I agree with it. Cool. No, I agree, and I wanted to say this real quick: is that um, people come. Santa Cruz is on the map. People come all the time. When when Jamie came to town two weeks ago, the kids in Pleasure Point were talking about it. Yeah, and they don't talk about anybody else. They're, they don't really care. 
Because we're in we're we're a North Shore on our own, you know. Like he's we, enigmatic. Yeah. He's charismatic. So he's, congrats to having Job on that program. Our um, trajectory went from like we're we're go- moving, moving, right. and like I was like, oh, we just keep at it and keep telling our story. It's gonna keep going. But the trajectory, that's what that word literally means, was changed and it rocket shipped up when he and, came on board. Oh he, he had Okay, was, when he came on board, I had this vision of O'Neill. Like in their they're in their war room. Shit. They're in their war room and JOB's on Buell and they're tearing paper and like Oh god. Yeah, probably yeah. freaking out. I I would imagine. I mean, I I do see Pat and the O'Neill guys walk by our shop and stare at our windows and if you don't think we put Sage Erickson, Dane Reynolds, <laughs> and Jamie O'Brien in that window to stare back at him for a reason. Well, again, you're not paying attention. Do they still walk by and go to yeah, Verb every day? They yeah. do. They walk by and they look yeah. at your building with these, these like, because here's the and difference. I love it. So I had this theory <laughs> recently. Is like, uh, I was standing in the window amazing. one of those days, and I don't even think they noticed me. But you, you I saw, saw them, you saw them walk by. So I jumped up in the window and just stood there. Uh, like, you, you're like a mannequin. A mannequin. You're a mannequin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, us and O'Neill, I love O'Neill. Uh, inspired by Jack O'Neill. Inspired by the whole O'Neill story. Grew up loving them. They sponsored me and our group as a lifeguard. Mm-hmm. Mike Locatelli is a, a, right. a mentor of mine. Absolutely. Taught me uh, how to wear my socks. Uh, and uh, I love O'Neill. Tall. And they had a good run. They had a good run, but it's it's our turn. Well, and uh, it, I, have I, they it, slowed down? I'm sorry, oh, yeah. sorry. Have they slow, have they slowed down because of you? You tell me. I don't know. I think we're probably. Those I dead, think we're probably. I think it's more than a dent. Okay. We're number one in California right now. Okay. Uh, that's just from... Um, heard it how, right here, folks. Let me go back to the corporate thing. Are you corporate yet? Or do you want to go corporate? Dude, or you I'll stay? never go never. corporate. Okay. Never. never. I hate that world. Man. What makes a wetsuit company corporate? Uh, just even the... I, oh, shit. Money. Money? Once money starts getting involved, <laughs> people start... I mean... You know, you, you're, you're under the radar, you're not making a bunch of money, everybody loves it, and uh, I don't know, when money gets involved, things change. Yeah. My experience as a salesperson in the surf industry was, as soon as me, as a salesperson, made more money than my manager, there was a problem. We got a problem. We got a problem. We've got a problem. We got a problem. The guy <laughs> selling the stuff is making more money than me, this I don't is- like him anymore. Thanks, I get. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's wild. Um, uh, salesmen deserve good money. Sales are sales is tough. tough. I have a mentor in my life who said to me, "I want to write you big checks because I know I'm getting bigger checks." That's red. That's mm-hmm. red. Think about yeah. your salespeople, right? I want to reward you because you I know you're making money, but I'm making more, so it's okay. Yeah. So Sean Dollar. Uh, Nate Yeomans, mm. Steve Mendelton, like these are guys. These are our reps in California. They're OG they guys. Are, they're they're killing it because yeah. why? Because we're number one in Jacks. They got nine stores. Mm. And when I said we're number one in California, you know, through our shops, we've gone from you know uh, another wetsuit brand to what it seems like is California's core wetsuit choice. And Can we rope this back real quick? Rope yeah. it back. Uh, I want to rope back to Jacks. Okay, so you're you're number one in Jacks currently, right now. Jacks surfboard shops in Southern California. Yes. I mean. So I mean that's that. I, I just want to say, that's quite an honor. Jacks sells billboards that pay for their rent. They're the number one, right? Well, number They're, one in CCS right now, and that's hmm. normally that's that's O'Neill territory. Wow. So I mean, O'Neill's been probably number one in CCS for. Dozen years. Okay, so I don't want to pick on O'Neill anymore. What I, I want to love pick, O'Neill. What, what I want to say to you is we're natural. I, f- I feel, born, I, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. our uh, competitors, board, though. But mm-hmm. so exactly. But board sports should be fun, right? Heck Number yeah. one, the whole reason we do this is fun. And I feel like with Buell right now, your attitude is fun first. You can make fun of yourself. You can make, and it's all about being having fun. Well, check the splatter pack. Exactly. I mean, so it, this is a great example right here. It, we have splatter fanny packs. And when I got to tell you, when I, I we, this is on the bottom of some of our softboards, and we even made a junior wetsuit out of this. When I first presented it to the team, uh, 
there was hesitation. They were like, that is way too loud. That's way too crazy. And my answer was, I'm not designing for you. Designing for a 12-year-old kid. The kids love this. So mm -hmm. the fact that you don't like it right. actually reinforces that we're going in the right direction. Eyeballs on booties. Bones on wetsuits. Colorful stuff. Bold. Bright. You know, uh, I, I think it... it, it you haven't have, changed. No. You've been doing this the chances. whole time. No, and everybody tells me I'm wrong. Okay. Who's everybody? And then Who? suddenly the wrong guy's number one in California. Yeah. I don't know. So what's wrong there? No, no it's just, it's just, uh, I know I'm usually on to something when somebody tells me you can't do that. <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of been, you know, we're a little bit of, we're a little bit of a rebel. I don't like authority. <laughs> I really don't. And so <laughs> and that comes through in the brand. And you know what? Santa Cruz was born and bred on big airs, punk rock, being bold, mm -hmm. nicknames, like, uh, Out of the ordinary. Oh, and and, and heckling and challenging mm -hmm. your friends and right. pushing your friends. Quirky, and, fun, challenging. Yeah. I, uh, I want to go All back. that stuff. And not corporate. All that stuff that's is, 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 is... And we're seeing that. And what you're that's doing. why I believe people are, uh, you know, buying into it because it is, it's real. And the people we got behind it, Noe Kalu Kukui, Rocky, Bud Freitas, uh, Chad Wells, who... Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good friend who came over from Quicksilver, and uh, we put together this authentic team. And uh, recently, we we did a trip out to Waco, and four four or five people, you know, uh, couldn't go for whatever reason. And between those people I just mentioned, we were able to kind of step right in there and join the team without it looking too hmm. obviously at the, old at the and surf, out at of the wave pool out there in Waco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I think our team... Have you bounced off the bottom out there yet? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? I heard yeah, it's pretty rough. So. You bounce off the bottom, huh? Yeah, you know, um, I went out there a couple years ago uh, during the summertime when it was warm and I had no wetsuit, and I didn't think it was that difficult at all. Uh, fast forward a year later, and it's hooded 5'4s, booties, gloves, and all of a sudden I was like, this board's not big enough for me. So hold it. They charge $5,000 a day per person that can't heat that thing? Uh, not in the middle of December, <laughs> no. But, 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 but picture this. That's not top of the line. <laughs> but picture this. Well, for a wetsuit company, it is. Oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. We got a discount. We went out there at the right time. We got to test our... Oh, they're like, wetsuit guys, course. turn the heater off. Dude, midnight in the middle of Texas, and the stadium lights are on. I've been drinking some moonshine brandy that Adam Veers <laughs> brought back. And I was like, I'm not surfing. I've been cartwheeling. It's hard to get up. It's cold. I'm old. Like, my boards are probably too well, thin. That wave looks challenging, though. It's not as easy as... I, th I feel like the, uh, the, 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 the chaos it's a wave one, pool is It's a one-foot takeoff at Waco, and it yeah, builds. It builds. And it is, it's, it's a challenging. It's quirky and challenging, yeah. and if you're old and your front foot wants to drag... <laughs> I, tested, I, tested, I tested the tail pad with both feet a few times <laughs> side but, by side hey you know what when it all comes together and that night i had moonshine i was like i'm not i'm already done surfing veers was like dude we're having a heat dodgers giants oh and he actually wrote on his board he called LA. out yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he wrote on go. his i had to go like, we we got this great like rivalry together i'm probably three and 30 in heats against mm. him but i love every mm. one of them and I didn't stand a chance. Veers is the old trifecta Dude, you, champion. You didn't have the knife, cut the leash. He's the best <laughs> over 200 pound surfer in the world, I think, probably. He's, he's magic feet. He's incredible. Mm. The pride of Ventura down there. He's mm. down there, Emma Wood on one foot waves, just hammering them. Buckets. But, but anyway, uh, you know, with a little bit of moonshine, a little bit of uh, encouragement from so when you drink, when you drink team. moonshine, is it like you sip moonshine? Like that Chinese shit? Or do you, that I know, that uh, it came it like a in sipper? a mason jar with a weird cap. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. It smelled hard, but uh, it got me in the mood, and uh, it, it warm, made got the whole trip. It got you warm. Fun. Yeah, finally got pitted. So pitted. Hold it. So <laughs> the moonshine got you pitted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kyle Boothman was there again to assemble a team of people like this. Uh, Kyle Boothman was there to capture all of it. 
And he was like, we need a good shot of Buell. And I'm all, not going to happen. <laughs> and after Moonshine, somehow, I don't know. It just you got pitted? Of, yeah, it got, came together. And nice. Like, and it's those moments that you're like, man, I, I'm a surfer for life. And in that moment, hmm. 50 years old, yeah. overweight, I'm still able to like get a good one that like lights my day, lights my week up. I was like, for weeks before I saw the footage, I was I was on cover acid. Uh, I pictured I was behind the bowl and came spitting out. Now when, a lot of hands are perfect. When when Boothman actually showed me the footage, I was like, oh. But uh, regardless, it's those moments in surfing that just remind you do, how, how. Do you awesome. think now you should be selling moonshine in the shop? Probably. <laughs> I'm sure Moonshine's I'm sure got a big business. It's the label Buell could be. You know? Right. I mean, it's it's got some branding in it, so maybe Moonshine. Buell Shine. Um, yeah. This weekend was a big uh, surf weekend here in town. Like a Keto lot of board, shit right? going on. Santa Cruz Board Riders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. They make the it, town proud. I, I'm I'm so proud of them. I, I really love them. am. Yeah, I'm not, like it's, uh, what I love about it is there's like ten year olds who are proud, and there's fifty year olds who are proud, and when you can that Put energy them all is like. Priceless, you know, and uh, and we're doing well as our little town. Um, like BK's done a great job too. He's, yeah, he's BK's really, into he's it. He's the one yeah. who really kind of spearheaded it, and like, you know, it's a team, and they're it proud, is. and they got they got gear, and I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty psyched on that whole group. And yeah, I'm proud of our team, and I'm proud that they represent Santa Cruz so well. In a Rufo, oh. Marcel <laughs> Soros, and Pete Mel are representing yeah. the fifty and over, and that's amazing. <laughs> Right, like, that's it's, so awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's that's that's the like the three musketeers right there. Uh, well, it says a lot about our town, and it's it's pretty cool. They're making us proud. What it says a lot about is that these guys could grow up together um, as rivals, as competitive rivals, yeah, and, and they're still friends. Yeah, you know, and and that's the beauty of Santa Cruz, really, when it comes down. How can you not be friends with Marcel? This bro, bro. This bro, bro. is awesome. Is Mr. Clean He's always costume? got a smile. Oh <laughs> my goodness. This Mr. Clean costume was amazing. Um, let's get back to business. Uh, Rocky. So earlier you were saying Buell's number one in California. The success of Buell is great. Um, five years? Ten years? What's going on with Buell? Is it, are we expanding? Are we going to have a... a oh, you man. Know, like, what's, what's going on? What's the future? Well, you know, for me... Success again is the people involved, and to have Jamie O'Brien, Dane Reynolds, Sage Erickson, uh, Chad Wells, Bud Freitas, Matt Rockhold, Noe Kalukakui, to have those people be involved in it to me is success. So, you know, like for me, God, do I really even have anything left to prove? Where do I really want to go with this? For me, I never thought we'd get quite to this spot. Where do we go from here? Do we do we well, do we turn this thing into a clothing brand? Well, well that's the next. But, I, I was. I mean, I, I mean, right? That, is that the next well, step? That's, right? It's in a, you know, we expanded into soft boards and we're doing really well. And again, anything to me that's fun, I'm in. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to take it too seriously. Uh, although there may be a time when we decide, you know what? Let's just focus solely on wetsuits. I don't know. And when do people say? Oh, there's a Buell Carver you've sold out. You know, like when, do you know what I mean? Like, is there, is, yeah, that, is that? There is that. Yeah, you yeah, know, so it's sure. like you believe in yourself. Because you can't please everybody. Yeah, and it's, no. so it's like, is it, are, is, okay, my point being, is there a future in wetsuits that can keep Buell successful and rolling through the future Without a big clothing we, brand. We could do that right now. But, look how, but, but are we... Look how many we, people surfing, TC. No, I get it. But you know, how, it how eager are we... How ambitious am I? Do I? How ambitious are we as a group? Like we, we're already there. We could be fully sustainable, uh, profitable company for years to come. Or do we want to be a juggernaut? Well, and juggernauts suck because people who come in suck. Well, you know, like that's the problem that I've seen so in the you, past. Then you lose, that, then there's you lose, a, there's a period of time you lose that local flavor because you've got all of a sudden you got a lot of people from outside your outside world. Coming There's in. give and takes with everything. Right. And like, right. uh, yeah. do I wish I was 100% in control? Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, and true that. 
I think in order to lifeguard, <laughs> we got a lifeguard, two handed fuels here. Thank God, two handed bottle fuel. Well, my point being with that is, yeah. Ryan. Oh my goodness! I've been involved in some big companies in my life that were small with awesome ramping up. I'm when, stoked right now. Yeah, and when they ramp up, it's so fun. And then when it kind of gets here, it's not so fun. You know, it's the people... How do you keep that up? How do you... Yeah, so is is that on your shoulders? Do you lay in bed at night wondering how we keep this machine going that way? I think you enjoy... Is that yours? There's a a couple other things I lay in bed at night wondering, but... uh, (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, yeah, um, you know, where, where do we... Take it, and do I really have gas in the tank to mm-hmm. really? Because I mean, honestly, my involvement a hundred percent needs to be in this for it to really run like this and be truly authentic. So I think the key for the brand is to probably keep me a hundred percent engaged the and psyched on it. But yeah, where do we where do we go, and at what? At what level are you so big that you've lost some of that? Let me ask you this question. Do you, do you, do you prefer the time when you're selling wetsuits out of your garage? Yes. Or do you prefer the t- or what do you prefer right now? Yes. Is there a secret knock on your garage? Is there like a... There was. Dude, I, I hid from people knock? back in those days. I didn't even want to sell. I was reluctant. So mm-hmm. it was right. feels good to have a team of people handling the stuff that I might not be, you know, my in my wheelhouse. Uh, well, tons of people always told me they were like, I didn't know the secret knock. To get to, to open the door to you want it, you want it. It's not available. You can't have it. Okay, you want it. <laughs> Secret knock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's positives to both. You know, I would have never, wouldn't be here where we are without the help of the people, you know, involved. Uh, but yeah, it, it it in order to grow and to sign Jamie O'Brien and to even talk to Dane Reynolds, right? Uh, you need support from a group and. That means you're probably going to give up some of that control. I got to pitch everything now. I oh, used to sure. pitch it by myself. Well, then you got. Yeah, I know you have a you have a bunch of guys involved. Got a board. Um, while we talk about, uh, let's talk about Nat Young. Oh what, how God. about France? Yep. He kills France. Go. I was let's go. so stoked. Uh, when he signed, I think he made the semis or quarters in France. What's the? He made the semis. Semis in France. No, 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 in no. Portugal. Portugal. Killed France. France, he, he, France he won, had a tough call. Yeah. He won in L.A. He won in L.A. No, he's killing. LA had a contest? LA? No, it wasn't not LA. Huntington Beach? Huntington, yeah. He won the Jax Pro, which was before the US Open. Does that help you uh, in Jax? Number one in I Jax? think so. I mean, it yeah. just adds credence to our brand. You, you did we, a big signing at the store. It, it should have, we should have had a big window of Nat saying Unveiling. congratulations or whatever. But uh, in, Nat's, in Nat's view, you know, Nat's the greatest competitive surfer in Santa Cruz history. Hands down. He's only 30 years old. Right. People, anybody who thinks he's done and even mention it to him, oh, good luck with that. He's like, I'm young. He's totally strong, fit. I'm fit. Totally I'm surfing fit. better than ever, and I'm getting back on tour. And he had me at hello. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've always been a Nat Young fan. I'm mm-hmm. a Santa Cruz fan. I do the right thing for the brand. And the brand story says, fucking sign Nat Young right now and don't wait till he qualifies. Support him right now. Show him you support him, and whether he qualifies or not, we're in. Right. He's a town legend. He's going to be worth gold to us no one better, as a brand. There's no one better that you can sign. No one and better. again, you want to talk corporate stuff, you know, I seen, I seen this all going down. I saw Nat's trending up. His, his uh, Everything's going good for Nat. And I went to the group, and I said, let's sign Nat. And it was like middle of the year, and everybody's like, what? we don't have budget for that. We didn't plan for that. <laughs> We can't not plan for this. This is Nat Young. Yeah. Pride of the West Side. Right. Let's get on board. And uh, we signed him right before the Surf Ranch event. Boom. Stickers on his board. Everybody notices. Pete Mel's uh, in the announcer's booth talking about it. And, uh, you know, for me, that was a great moment. It's like the story goes here. Santa Cruz. Uh, right. Santa Cruz. Uh this great surfer from Santa Cruz is now a father and uh, a married man. He's got a family behind him and he wants a second chance on tour. He's this close and I took it to the group. Group got behind it. 
And I hope he turns me out to be clairvoyant because all of a sudden he's on the precipice of qualifying for the tour. Oh. And we got a story. Right. You know, he, he was rookie of the year. He was on tour for five or six years. He fell off. It's been three years. Let's see what Nat Young father strength style can do. So, uh, I don't know. I'm incredibly proud to have uh, gotten him on yes. board. And now he's literally one contest away. One heat, two heats at Holly Eva. Mm -hmm. And he should requalify. He'll make the top 36 in the world. And my talk with my team right now is we need to build a plan around him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's, let's follow him next year. So I think, yeah. of, I think of Nat Young as a Richard Schmidt and a Chris Gallagher. Oh, and then there's a, Nat, and there's Nat Young. Whoa! Uh, that's, I've uh, never heard anybody say that. But that's, that's the way perfect, I look at it. You know, what? yeah. Mashup. It's yeah. it's 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 so rare. Uh, we've been here for a long time doing this, and there's very few Nat Youngs. And I seriously categorize him with those two guys. And I'm proud that you took a, a risk with Nat because he is 30 years old and well, hungry. It's a, it's a perfect. It's a perfect combo. He's it looks Chris. like a good move now. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay, no, it when, does. when we did it, well, a lot of questions. You know what? He, right. he, he, well, oh, he lost just, his seat. And is he ever going to make it back yeah. on tour? Never, isn't, isn't he done? Are you, are you kidding? Yeah, you but you're the, company, you're the company that helped him out to, make, to get to that next step. You, you had faith in him. You supported him. Well, yeah, I think most people... You stuck your neck out for him. Uh, let's be honest. Probably O'Neill's waiting to see if he made it or not. I don't know. Yeah. Like, and, and, well, and who else? Who Honestly, the, the, without uh, having... The clothing companies can't sell wetsuits. You know what I mean? So bottom line, that's, that's I think a lot of success of Buell right now is Buell's not a clothing company trying to sell wetsuits. Buell is a wetsuit company dedicated to improving the, the lives of the youth in the world of surfing. And because of that, I feel like you guys are really growing. Um, there wasn't a lot of options for Nat, I don't think. At the time, we were surprised nobody else had jumped on board, or even yeah. that a clothing company didn't jump right on board. I think, I think Salty Crew probably talked about it. Maybe it was a small local like, company. Pacific but, Wave did. Small, small local companies did. Pacific Wave actually right. is a really good sponsor, and they they they're, Which, they're the helping way, fund his and his, Buell Wetsuits now yeah. available at Pacific Wave. So where's the clothing company that jumps on board with that? We kind of thought that somebody would step up and. Jump yeah. on board. Nobody has yet, but uh, I mean, he's, well, if he again, rips, if he goes out and rips some lifts, maybe Salty Crew will pick him up. He's on, he's on the precipice, and I don't know yeah. that it's it's them. Or Can you teach him spear fishing or something? You know, like yeah. Well, he is a, he is a great he is a great waterman. But <laughs> he the, is. The point is, is there's people out there looking, and I think somebody's going to jump on it. But jump now because he's qualifying. In the same sentence, we also have to say. That there's probably never been a more difficult time to find a sponsor in the history of surfing. You know, like right now, it seems like it's really there's some really qualified surfers around the world that are self-funded right now. And I, we go back like, does Pete Mill have a sponsor? Himself, yeah. Like, yeah like, you know what I'm saying? That's like the, the guy just won. He won the whole deal. Does John Mel have a sponsor? Besides no, which is bummer that, you know, like, again, loyalty is big to me. And, you know, those guys have, have helped make that Quicksilver wave and mountain uh, what it is. And, like, I would think you would kind of stick with those guys, you know, a little bit more. When you said Pete Mel, I was like, Quicksilver. And he should right. still be with Quicksilver. The, 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 yeah. the store sells Quicksilver. It, but it's uh, not there. But that's, and that's the sad, that's what, that makes me sad about the surf industry right now. Is why aren't. I mean, maybe it's not all green grass and pastures over at Quicksilver right now, but the fact they cannot sponsor Pete and John Mel right now, give me well, a There's a lot of play. options. Yeah. But Everybody why, wants to go why, young. Why, why do you have to stick with a, what, a surf company? Why can't you go with, like, you know, you see these, let me ask you this question. You see these Formula One drivers, right? You see these soccer players and other sports where they got sponsorships all over the place, right? We're going back to our, right. our why, talk. Remember why, the NASCAR right? wetsuit? The NASCAR, if you're a NASCAR, you're a Head to freaking we toe. had this talk on right. the show. And why is not happening? In, why is not happening in surfing? Well, you know, I think brands do. I mean, it does devalue, you know, the real brands that are supporting you to just flood the whole system. So, I think there is something to 
aligning yourself with a really good brand and just one. Well, why a few. You, why but can't you, you have definitely one? shouldn't align yourself with brands that don't have the same values as you. You know. Okay. I mean? What? So you get. So you, like. So uh, Nat goes with you, Buell, and he go gets Whole Foods, or he goes gets you know a, a major company, AT and T, or or something larger like that, that can that that's not in the surf world that has money. I mean, I mean. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But For when, either the but, athlete but or can, the, the right. brand, but it, it hasn't happened that often. Okay. Can Buell Wetsuits sponsoring Nat Young help AT and T to put AT and T on Nat's wetsuit? I, that's just not genuine. It's weird. Look at a golfer. But, Look at a professional golfer has a bag with the thing, and you got the hat, you got everything. You got the well, thing. Dane Reynolds told me, you know, compared that himself and other athletes to golfing, and he was like, "Why do we have to have a logo that's?" Eight inches by eight inches that you can see from a helicopter. Because you why get, can't we just have a small shoe? Because you get paid X amount of dollars per year to, work, to put well, the small shoes. I, I get it. But, He's but, like, but, hey, you know, the golfers have a small swoosh. They don't have a massive logo on the right. side of their head. Right, right. So I mean, there is. But is that in your mind? Is that what you think about? No, but like, do you? We had this talk on the show a couple of years ago. Yeah, because I, I raced cars. I presented <laughs> yeah. the NASCAR suit that we were going to make for Adriano de Souza. Yes, because Adriano has twenty four stickers on his board. Right, and he already already looked NASCAR. And I actually designed something, and when I looked at it, it was so over the top I couldn't even really <laughs> present it to him. You know, and like. I didn't personally want to see the surf world. Shake and bake, right? I didn't want to see the surf world go in that direction, so I didn't push it. But right. yeah, I mean. Is that in our future? What's weird, the, surf, the surfboard has everything, everything on it. Whole the foods? surfboard shaper's got to be chapped. Right. <laughs> and again, we're just a wetsuit sticker away from that happening. Right. If somebody invented a wetsuit sticker, people could just be like, mm -hmm. hasn't happened totally yet. But do you think about that? Yeah, but uh, I, you know, it's like you can't really defend it. Like, how does a, how does a surfboard shaper defend a person bastardizing their whole board with all these other stickers? You know? I just want to go back a little bit on this. Every competitive like sport right now currently sport. is like NASCAR. You know, like if you're if you race a snowmobile, competitive. You, you go out and you, you against three or four, one, two, three or four surfers in the lineup versus doing the same thing as skiing or snowmobiling, racing cars, or whatever Nat's it is. sponsored by Rakuten. I was watching there you go. I watched a show last night, TC, on Netflix about curling in Canada. The curling, right? Oh, the sponsors? Duh! <laughs> to uh, toe! They're making a fortune. They, they got Trainers, the, the best groom on the planet. Huh? Cornhole. The poker. professional cornhole player. Poker. Look at poker. Those guys are just sporting. Okay, just so you, right, right, patches, now, patches. right now you watch WSL, and every time they interview people, it's on this clear piece of glass with like 70 stickers of Ikea-looking yeah. woodwork. Yeah, and, it's like, we got all these corporate sponsors, but the surfers don't. You know, it's... Nope. Well, the fact that they still aren't paying for uh, lodging, to me, is crazy. Couldn't they set up a deal in every... T How would you expect somebody to go to a game and find their own house? Yeah. Or lodgings, or be homeless. That Why stuff still baffles me. Why don't they have a sponsorship with um, right. Airbnb or something? Right. Like just set nope. everybody up. Like other sports, are big motorhomes, right? But in the WSL's defense, they are doing quite a few good things. Equal pay, equal by nature. I do equal like price money. That's that, cool. I do equal. like that. And then they've got they've actually got a um, a retirement program. Depending on how many years you are on tour, you're going to receive. Um, a retirement check from the WSL. Right. And so they do do some really cool things. I watch every WSL event. I uh, I feel like they're doing a good job. I feel like they're trying. You know, whether or not... We're have, all critical, but we keep coming back. Well, we? whether or not they have the, uh, the the money coming in for the money going out, we don't... I don't know that. But I feel like they're actually trying to promote professional surfing. Yeah. Um, and I give them that credit because the world is watching. Okay. Uh... Whether or not uh, America media is watching is different. Talk about Luke. That was number four when your question. Oh, keep yeah, those Luke. Up. Guy, hang on yeah, second. Luke. From Big a... injury, uh, disc or something? Yeah, he's back. But I got to tell you, like, I don't know why I'm like Luke's spokesman. But, you know, everybody wants to talk to me about Luke. Luke kicked out of that fight. 
Strickland, he was going to beat Strickland's ass. And I was like, yeah, he was. But, and they're like, what happened? And the thing they're critical about is, oh, did he hurt his back? And I was like, yes. They're like, why is he sitting on his tailbone in the hot tub? And then four days later, he's on a jet ski in Utah. <laughs> I'm like, I can't answer those questions for you. Uh, I, I know that he's hungry and he wants, he, he would love to get another crack at it. And, and I've had some private conversations with him that make me believe he's going to get another crack a tough way to make a living. God, yeah. Okay, so right? you're, you're close with Luke. Is the six-pack okay? Is it, are we okay? The six-pack's okay. He's been in L.A. too long. Oh. I mean, shorts are getting shorter. Mm-hmm. No! Shirts, shirts are Tighter. showing up now. They, he's got the... the they're, they're cut? They're cut. Oh, no! Yeah, they're cut. And I'm like, don't you ride for, like, Ruka or something? Why are you wearing, like, this fashion stuff? So, uh, I don't know, he's being influenced by L.A. a little bit, but, um, you know, at the core, he's a fighter and he loves to fight. So I, I feel got like all... he wants to fight, in my opinion, just to show Dana that he can fight. Yeah, him and Dana can go they, ahead. They, I know, right? They had a big talk. So, okay, so he has a, a, a is bulging he still, is, is he disc. still hungry? Is he still hungry? He is hungry. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's hungry. And if he has to move on to Bellator, which... Is actually run by Scott Coker, who used to run Strike Force when he was the champ. Right, the champ. Yeah. He's remained friends with him, I I believe, and uh, I think he's got opportunities outside the UFC. But there's no the UFC is the place you want to be if you want to prove you're the best in the world. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. currently where Luke is. Have you talked to Luke since he decided his injury was going to keep him to fighting? Have you had that Since conversation? Had, no. Since, okay, because I Since wonder. Since he hurt his back, no. Yeah, no, I, I wonder what his mental his mental mind is right now, because that was his chance. Remember? Back problems. Uh, I mean. Yeah, like I wonder how he feels mentally, because that was his moment to kick some ass and be on the top. I think he's got one more run in him. Okay. You know the last the the people he's fought the losses he has taken. Jan, Jan Blockowitz, who's just lost his belt but was the world champ. Uh, Yoel Romero is a beast. Uh, Michael Bisping's a Hall of Famer. Amazing. So, right. I mean, you you got nothing but to hold your head high. Like the losses he's taken are Super Bowl losses. Right. He's the best athlete that's ever come out of Santa Cruz. Why? Because the UFC is probably the most competitive popular sport in the world right now Hands it's down. a one-man sport it's not i mean trent dilfer won a super bowl mm-hmm. uh julie Inkster, hall of fame golfer, golfer right. dude there's incredible santa cruz athletes but ufc middleweight belt might be more coveted or more uh impressive than just about anything right. and the fact that he won the strike belt strike force belt and the ufc belt I think his legacy is cemented, but he's not done. Yeah. Good. Well, he's, that, he's still young. I mean, and even the fights he lost yeah. was like such a quick, like shot and down type stuff. Like it wasn't like let's beat it out. Vitor Belfort. Yeah, you know, it was all like a bummer. So sure. I want to see Luke come back, and here's why: Luke represents Santa Cruz. Luke Great is a skater. surfer, skateboarder. I mean, the, he's he's the California boy, right? In my opinion, yeah, more so than that dude. Uriah Faber. Yeah, yeah Uriah. No, I'm not. No, Uriah is Sacramento. I'm not giving Uriah the California boy. I want to give it to Luke because Luke really represents, in my opinion, Surf, what California really represents. Well, there's something I always like to talk about. Skaters are tough. You yeah. ever seen? You ever seen a skater, a skateboarder trying to get a trick down? And the amount of times they fall, and get hurt. right back up, mm. and they're hell bent to, to pull it off. And you think and of Emmanuel Guzman, I think of someone like him. He's tough. Tough. Well, right? Broken everything. Broke. They don't cry very often. I mean, yeah, bones is broken. Emmanuel broken. A lot. So, right? My daughter's broken 24 bones. Skate, most of them skateboarding. And uh, they rarely the same cry. They rarely cry. Times. Yeah. No, Ten like times. seven at one time, and like a bunch of bad things. But um, I just feel like Luke really represents our town. Um, I want to see him again. Um, I want to see him out there. And what I like about Luke is, I don't know Luke well, but when I see Luke, he stops and says, what's up, bro? To his friends, he's, yeah. he's, he's super funny. tight. He's yeah. fu- he is funny. If you don't know him, yeah. Like, yeah. you might get a, a, the wrong impression of him. If you only see him in interviews, he can come off kind of 
he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got something to prove, and it comes off a little bit different than it does in person. No, nope. to his friends is one of the best. Every Cuban time I see him, I took I I went to uh, on Valentine's Day. I took my wife to dinner and I bought her flowers. And Luke was at a big table and uh, and I saw him. And I know Luke. I know Luke. But then he was like, class act. I bought my wife flowers. Nice and then all these guys with their dates, it was a big date night. Nobody bought their dates flowers. And I can just see, I was like, oh my God. So I, I, I appreciate Luke. For don't that. forget, I stepped in the ring with him. Remember? That's right. You, you hit him, right? <laughs> yeah. How that on your he deck. comes out, huh? On your deck. Um, on, no, it was his deck, the house in oh, the okay. Capitola. He comes out, he goes, you a spar. I go, okay, I spar. How'd right? it go? Of course, it didn't go well. First of all, <laughs> he comes out and he's got a cell phone in his pocket, right? He's wearing board shorts, got a tank, got a. White beater shirt, and his cell phone's in his pocket. So I look, I go, hey, Luke, before we start, you know, you got your cell phone's in your pocket. So he goes, oh, shit. I go, boom! Oh, you like, tricked him. Yeah. No, it was in his cell phone. It'll was in be, his pocket. Uh, but how'd that what go? he was going for. Afterwards? Was, not good. Yeah. <laughs> he cleaned my talk. Was that a natural reaction? He got me here. Oh, he got me. His foot went so fast. I thought it was a jet fighter going to go. Oh, right, it might, he almost Buzz gave me a tower, fucking haircut. Just that. And then he got me here in the solar plexus. Uh, so Ding. do you spar with him? No. Fuck. I, I, made, Moonshine. I made him stand across from me and, and show me what it would be like, but he just wouldn't. He wouldn't do it. I mean, you he didn't want to hurt you. No, he you're not going to give a minor leaguer a chance yeah. to even do anything like that. But uh, I've, had, I've had some good uh, some good workout moments with Luke, and he's passed on some of his his. Good technique, but uh, so if you could give him a couple of words of advice for his next fight, what would it be for Luke Rockhold right now? Just get back in the ring because that he does his thing when he's in there. Uh, take take Khabib Nurmagomedov's offer to coach him seriously. They grew up in that AKA gym together, and Khabib seems to think he knows what it takes for Luke to be. The world champion he deserves to be their lifestyles their lives and where they're at haven't completely matched up and i believe luke's working out at ruka aka um i i i think if he somehow partnered with khabib and and they worked out together for um a good extensive time i think we'd see the the ultimate luke rockhold which yeah. i think he's the best um no gi grappler in the world a really couple, couple more fights in Luke's future is what you're saying. And right? get out of LA. LA. Get out of come back oh, to yeah. Sa- come back to Santa Cruz. Luke, buddy. Let's, let, let's, let's add an inch or two to the shorts. Come yeah. back. Come on, bro. Train um, with Khabib. Let's jump ahead to the kids, and we're gonna s- go backwards. Uh, Buell Wetsuits right now has all these kids. I want to know from Ryan Buell, who is the boy? The kid. Yeah. Like, who do you know? Like, who's the boy? Like, the youth movement? Yeah, wow. the youth, yeah. Like, it, I mean, there's a bunch. It changes all the time. But in your eyes, right uh, now. Right now, for right now, you got, okay, you got the two Brodies. You got Brody, Brody Fish Buck. He mm-hmm. is Jacob Zeekley's little, uh, little guy down in San Diego. Kids ripping. And then you got Brody Price. Oh, Brody Price, yeah. Ross Marty, yeah. Oh, yeah. Marty, Marty's and Brian, fire, yeah. Marty Marty's and Brian kid? Price, yeah, is yeah. Kid. Marty and Brian, yeah. Brosh Racula, aka mm. Brody yeah. Price, he's uh, killing it. Not only is he killing, he's just a good kid. And when he recently had a great run down at, I believe, was it NSSAs or uh, I think he's USSF or the USA uh, Championships down in Trestles, we watched him in a few heats, and he just he represented Buell so good. He's Always got a smile. He's always positive. He was getting pumped up for his heats. And guess who he thanked after his heat? Hmm. Barney. Wow. So that one's for Barney. That one's for Barney. Uh, so for a kid that young to have that much, you know, knowledge. presence and right. knowledge about him. And, you know, I mean, he had me at hello, too. But, you know. Well, you, and he's been doing really good. You pump he's, up. He's, he's been Barney winning, 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 winning. And, yeah, so... So good for Brody. What, I like that. What's a kid, a kid out to listen today on the show, a kid listening to the show, what's it going to take for them to be, you know, to get involved in your company or for you to look at him? What are, you, what what are, are you, people what, what looking are, for right what now? Are your, what are your requirements? What are your requirements to, to take on a young kid like, like that? Well, uh, um, our, our wants might be slightly different than other people, but uh, charisma. 
for me and us, mm. like a, a good representation of the brand. Uh, fun first, you know, that's that, those are key for me. Uh, and you can look from Austin Smith Ford to, you know, the rest of our team, Jacob Zeekley. It's like, it tells a theme, same thing as uh, people that aren't afraid to, to wear skeletons on their wetsuits, you know, but the, the industry in general, you know, it, it is changing a little bit from contest results, which still do hold some prominence, but you know, your presence online, your presence with other people, word of mouth, like all right. these, these character. Is, I your, think, is, is that presence, uh, it's, it's better to have that presence rather than win a contest? I, you, need, you need it all. You need Dude, it there's all. so many people in the well, world look at competing. You know, you have, yeah. JOB's, JOB's stuff wouldn't work if he wasn't the best backside barrel rider on earth or yeah. one of. Right. Okay, the reason he can ride a couch out at Sunset Beach or get towed into Sunset Beach uh, amongst a bunch of true watermen and not be yelled at is because he carries all those things. You couldn't just For go sure. out there and film right. Right. and expect to get away with that stuff. Right. The fact he grinches the pond at Pipe is amazing. You know, like the stuff he does. I think it starts with authenticity right. and being genuine and real and good and likable. Approach to be uh, said, approachable. There's something to be said for being likable and yeah. not rubbing people wrong. And he, I've seen it firsthand at our shop when the line was out the door and down the street. I've seen it firsthand in Hawaii when kids come up and talk to him. He takes the time for everyone. And, uh, right, that's cool. Yeah, for, for me and the brand... Um, He's the man. Can we talk about Trophy Man? Barney? Yep. <laughs> right? Always in my heart. What do you think he'd be doing today? What would you think he... You know what I'd shit? like to see him do? <laughs> what? I would have loved to see Barney get a crack at Waco. Because mm. that air section would have allowed him to try that mm. barrel roll that he tried at Pipe. Everywhere. All over the world. He's landed it on the backside of waves. He's landed it and stuck it, but nobody got quite got it on camera. He was the inventor of the backflip air. He was a pioneer. So uh, to see him get a repetitive number of, of attempts at Waco, I, I think we would have seen some crazy ass shit. Yeah. Uh, but you know, he motivated all these all these guys, the Jacob Zeekleys and all these guys that are pushing uh, the limit of what you can do. Uh, I think. You know, we owe we owe a little bit of that to Barney. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy with Barney being gone because I don't really think of him as being gone. I feel like I'm gonna see him. Like it's just weird with with his whole like. God, what I wouldn't do for uh, one of those stop in sessions where he came in hot. He would come into my office out of nowhere and like just barnstorm the place. <laughs> and like I was taken back at first, always like. Oh my God! And you're taken back. Well, just, because he's, he's someone taking well, you back. And also, too, he's covered in dog hair. Mm -hmm. And you're like, have you have you even showered in the last three days? Like, you know what I mean? Like, he was, came in hot. Yeah. And like I said, uh, what I wouldn't do, and I know people, skin dogs, said these kind of things. I know everybody. You know, he would come around and and he'd bring you a painting, and it would be about a, a party that you both attended eight years ago and there's this <laughs> glorious painting and like he loved giving to people and he, he gave yeah. joy and yeah. to not have him around uh, mm. that part that part I have photos I have photos to send to you from that, that night at KSTO when yeah. he came in the Spider-Man suit yeah the, uh, the baseball bat he the had watermelon a, he had a helmet the hard hat he had a helmet with hard horns hat. or was it a, a no, it was a hard hat. A space helmet? No, it was a hard hat. He wanted to be Gallagher. And he had a VCR, and he had a VCR and a VCR tape. Well, His mind ran <laughs> hot, dude. He, he, was a, he was a genius, but for, he ran yeah. hot, and right. it was hard to keep up with him. And yeah, for a radio show, that one day he brought in the TV and a VCR, and you had to explain, like, it's a radio <laughs> show. And, this is gonna and he, wanted to, he wanted to beat the shit out of the watermelon. I'm like... Dude. Oh, but that was pretty good. Cool. That would have been epic. <laughs> Gallagher's style. Who's cleaning that shit up? Well, it's because interesting, too, because those guys who run hot are the geniuses. You he know? was a genius. Yeah, man. he was. He really was. We yeah. couldn't keep up with him. 
No. It's funny because, you know, you look back at them and there's times you're like, oh my God, you're completely so out of it right now. And then you look back and you're like, you actually were, yeah, you were actually on so on point. Yeah. It's crazy to think that about Barney and what a, a treat that we were able to like share a bit of Barney's life. You know, it's. You got video of him on your, from your TV show. Oh no, Barney's amazing. No, oh, yeah, no, I just got those tapes back. I, I did, I interviewed him like 30 years ago. And uh, yeah, same Barney, you know, he never changed a bit. What have we missed? What have we missed here today? We missed anything? We covered it all? Is it God, it's been a, it's been a great two summers of wiffle ball. Actually, we've been playing on the west side, uh, and I got to be honest, I feel like a kid. Like you know, you remember little league when you set up your uniform and you woke up with a little bit of extra exuberance. Yeah. Game day. When we had we had Sunday four twenty Circle Church. We had this kind of running game, which Nat Young and. Um, uh, Chad Underhill and Sean Burns and a lot of the surf community mm -hmm. and, and just our community would jump into these games. Paul Kulichi's pretty unstoppable. <laughs> and it's this gathering of a community and ranged in age from 50 to uh, Paul's son, who's like seven years old, mm -hmm. Parker, and who's tough to hit, by the way. How do you do? Uh, who, <laughs> Parker? You. Me, I, I hit dingers oh. all day long, which is what I was going to say. People aren't going to like this, but... Yeah, uh, I live for hitting a home run. I forgot how great it feels. Even if it, even if it's plastic on plastic, <laughs> uh, somebody trying to get the ball past you and then everything coming together and, and sending one out into the bleachers. Holy, so you had a good game. Yeah. Yeah, well, we play a summer full of games. We probably played 30, 40 games out fun. there by now. Yeah. And it, they're, they're always competitive. They're always fun. Sometimes there's pretty... Gnarly arguments because they're mm. competitive, but uh, yeah, it's it's been a blast. I got a question for you, Ryan. Uh, Who wants I, some? I, I remember when <laughs> you guys used to do the boot, the paddle race for the, the boot. paddle race the for golden the boot. boot, the golden boot. Do we know who has the golden boot? Okay, so me and Skin Dog had that uh, blood feud paddle battle going right. for, for years. years. You'd win, he'd win. Yeah, yeah. The boot we went, went back, back and, and forth. forth more times my way. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he won't see Sorry, it. Skin Dog. He won't admit yeah. that. <laughs> he won't, well, so every time you won a race, you got to write a new rule on the bottom of the boot. Mm. And like there was rules like uh, if if the guy who doesn't hold the boot challenges you, you have 24 hours to accept the challenge. And there's these rules, and it was basically a paddle race from, from where? Cowell's Beach out around Mile Buoy and back, back, which it's about a three mile paddle. Yeah. Sounds weird, but mm. it's about a three mile paddle from that from angle. Because yeah. of the angle, yeah. Out around the mile, mile buoy hums. And if it's foggy, which it almost always is, you have to listen, listen for that hum. Yeah. And so your track out is like listening for the hum. And It uh, only hums on when it goes up and down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wave movement. How many of us have heard that hum at night? I can hear it in my house. Perfect. So if yeah. you're a paddle racer and all the races, including the Jay Moriarty paddle race, mm -hmm. go around that mile buoy, there's a little different thought in your head in the middle of the night when you hear that buoy humming. To me, it meant like chase that buoy. And I, I did one of the more prouder moments in my life was I won the J race. I spent a early career kind of in junior guards and lifeguards as a paddle racer. And that was real important to me. That's a big deal. Yeah, I think well, so. At the, the time, time it when, didn't When it started, it was like, no, it was I gotta admit, you were a threat every paddle board race back then. Now these water polo players that they they're gnarly. Oh, they're gnarly. They're gnarly. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I think about what it took, what it takes in life to be a champion or like the best at something. You gotta dedicate. No, you, you gotta no dedicate shit. your ass to it. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I that summer or for a few summers I was pretty good. But I think about that now. I'm all the work you have to put in. Like you gotta be ready for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it and there's no way around hard work. You want to be a champion, Luke Rockhold or the Jay Moriarty paddle race champ, there's always somebody coming for it. Man. Yeah, yeah. This town's filled with incredible. Did you do you wish there. you ended up with the boot? Do you wish you had the boot right well, now? Well, I don't even know what happened to the boot. I I'm know, pretty but sure Skin Dog didn't beat me for that fucking boot. <laughs> no, but he but, has it. But, he's got it? Yeah. But he won't admit it though. No, he says it's gone, but he's yeah, got but he it. Has a he has it in the rafter somewhere. Do you seriously think he skin dog? 
He's if got you've it. got the boot. I need a place to store my weed again. <laughs> Give me that boot back, skin dog. <laughs> and Even if I got a race for okay, it, I will. Okay, so the boot. I'll how need many, a couple of months. How many so. years did you have the boot? I don't know about years because that thing went did go back and forth. Because if you lost the boot, you're like, I'll challenge. Okay, and we right. did it again. Immediately. Yeah. And we had, the town was kind of involved. We had people betting. Like it was like a, the odds. I like, remember. It was big. The, the whole reason we did the first one is that local legend, Garth Taylor, mm. Skin Dog was bragging that he was the best paddler in town. And Garth Taylor said, uh, 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 uh. He Dikembe Mutumbo'd him. He said, uh, 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 uh. Buell will take you out. And they bet. Oh. And then I said, I'll make sure your money's safe. And I did beat Skin Dog that first event. Which was probably the most important. After that, we went back and forth, and hmm. he's an incredible, incredibly talented paddler. I thought there was no way he would even be anywhere near me, but oh he's... no, I did every J race forever in the boat, as you know. Yeah, and I would always wave to you guys and be like, "Suckers!" <laughs> and but Skinny could paddle for sure. Here's yeah, the thing: he, he went out hard, and I was just back behind him, laughing like. Just closing in like a shark. Dun, 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 dun. And when I'd catch up to him, I'd pull off my headphones. Mm -hmm. I had like a, I had a CD player on my back back then. Wow. Waterproof what was it, what was CD it player. What was it playing? Oh, a lot of uh, uh, no FX and like pump up music. I actually had the music timed <laughs> to the exact time of the race. So I would train with that music. And I knew where I was in the race. When the so when I knew change. Rocky Four came on, yeah. dun, 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 dun. I knew I had like a mile left. Mm. Turn it on. And I mean, literally music, God, music motivates you so much. Yeah. And although I love to paddle on natural and get the whole Five, scene, right. I paddled faster. With music. With music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So... God, that is one of my um, that's one of my crowning moments. Jay Moriarty was an incredible human, and to Absolutely. honor him yes. and honor Waterman, and they can't take my name off the trophy. The boot. Well, Skinny's got the boot. Skinny's got the boot. But well, it's, uh, it's, here's my point about that: that the whole one. race was there was a point in the race in the early years where it was like surfer Waterman guys. And then it has shifted now to like Olympic you know, athletes, exactly. Well, yeah, like world class water polo yeah. players and Olympic swimmers and yeah. like guys who people from Australia ringers. They, they take you know? it seriously. Yeah, and well, so Jamie was, Mitchell was in the game back yeah, then. Yeah, it, it's really cool to see that I was, that we were all there during a time when the paddleboard races were won by surfers and not water polo guys. And so uh, it, it was fun to watch you guys. It was fun to watch you and Skin Dog have that Beckett. rivalry. Tanner Beckett, yeah, good. Uh, I held the record on the. I held the record for the Wharf to Wharf race for quite a few years. Skin Dog broke it. Not sure if he really did because he timed himself. But luckily, <laughs> Tanner Beckett broke both of our records. Okay, and so even I think the record for Wharf to Wharf is now it's like forty two minutes, which is like, that's insane. Like but, insane. Uh, yeah. yeah, this town's got a history of incredible paddlers. So well, and the paddlers now, because um, I still love to help out with the races, but uh, they're gorillas now. You know, it's changed. They're like, like stand up dudes. They're just like pulling so strong. But when you're at the end of a stand-up paddle race, aren't you ready for outriggering? I, I would say. So right, that's yeah. why for me, it yeah. is a waterman skill and it's yeah. great, uh, but it's not. Paddling with your hands. Yeah. Immersing them in the water. Right. That's like. And right. what's crazy is it's how the. Then you're ready for it's the how you change the, the between dirt. big knee digs right. and then stroking. And you get back on your knees and digging. Like the, when you get the true athletes who were able to do both and uh, Adam so efficiently. Anthony Tajnik, Ryan yeah. Augenstein. Mm -hmm. These yeah. are surfer Augie, Yeah, they they Augie all was did the really James. good. Right, Augie was very good. Very good. Yeah. And Augie, I, uh, just a step to that point, Ryan Augenstein does not get uh, a lot of credit because he's, he's, he's a quiet. quiet, in the corner, kind of a shy dude. Stud. Stud. Always yeah. been. Capital. Yeah. Yeah. Junior lifeguard. I know. Lifeguard. I forget, but he came on the show one time and we had a whole bunch of Mavs guys and Ryan sat in the corner. Oh, it was a Mavs show. And yeah. we're like, Ryan, He's in the corner. paddle. Come over to the peak. He's Come in the talk corner. Like, yeah. so he He's in the far <laughs> corner. Like, yeah, he didn't want to talk. Yeah. And he just, he, yeah. Yeah, quiet. Mm -hmm. Studliness is, is pretty cool. Yeah. And Very he's cool. definitely one of those guys. Yeah. There's a lot of them in this town and uh, I'm just, proud to be a part of it yeah our town's awesome 
It you're is. an awesome part of it. Yeah. The success of what you're trying to do is great. Um, I appreciate the underdog that suddenly is a dog. It's great. Ooh, ooh, right. Ooh, ooh. And again, but you're still wearing the underdog hat, though. I mean, he likes the underdog hat. Yeah. I'm still a baseball player at heart. <laughs> you know, I played at SoCal. Mm -hmm. I played at Cabrillo. I'm still playing now in my own head out in the wiffle ball field. <laughs> uh, to me, I'm a byproduct still of homers. this town. You're still hitting homers. I'll go deep. <laughs> Check my Instagram, dude. I'm, I'm going to post a five homer uh, uh, beast tonight, I think. Mm. Maybe. Now that I talked about it. Uh... I want to circle back to where we talked about earlier. Five years from now, Buell Wetsuits will be where? Ruling the world. I mean, uh, is there, is there, is there, a, a, I mean, not apparel. That's always like the obvious. Hopefully we can do it with wetsuits and not go that direction. But um, I don't know. There's something cool. But I mean, you, not everybody wears a wetsuit, but everybody has clothes. And yeah, it's but the same thing. Like everybody I know wears a hat. So uh, to be able to touch more people uh, sounds fun to me, but uh, yeah, staying true and, and staying core and focused on what we really do best probably is our direction. The, the mm. surfing population now is, is tenfold or a hundredfold than what it used to be a couple of years ago. Well, they, yeah. I mean, a, a real surfers is surfers. surfers is a good question, but I, I just I appreciate what Buell's doing because I see frothing kids. Fun, having fun, having a time of their life, right. and they're embracing your brand. Yeah. You know, and that to me is a we want to embrace them back. Right. You know, that's so cool. And to the same see thing that. with everyone. Uh, yeah. I don't know how, but all of a sudden, Ben and Sam Coffee found themselves sponsorless. Mm. Was the first thing I did. Oh, yeah. Work. Which one are we getting? How are we getting them? Uh, we need to make room and. Uh, we signed Sam Coffee, lifeguard, stud. Could oh, yeah. easily win the J race if he wanted to. Right. Uh, surfs all day long. Sur uh, teaches surf lessons with with Bud's group, and then surfs all day long. He's I, just a stud. I coached him in the soccer team I had. He was ten years old. One. Of the, he's probably the best ten year old soccer player I've ever seen. He was tiny. Man, he was incredible. Soccer For player. me, that told the Buell story again. Like Sam Coffee's available. Let's get him. Yep. He's he's a lifeguard. He just represents a lot of the same things that you know yep. the, the core values that I have. So, well, and I mean, come on, pops. That's I mean, the coffee name in this town. Yeah, it's, he's got it. Yeah, and and Ben had a great weekend at the contest, and I'm sure he's going to end up with uh, somebody really cool. Looked like he had a IPD. Uh, wetsuit and stickers on his board, which is uh, Bob Hurley's old jam. So, hmm. uh, you know, don't cry for me, Argentina. Mm -hmm. Ben Coffee's going to be just fine. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I love supporting um, these local athletes and Austin Smith Ford. Again, signed him uh, 11, 12 years ago, and I think he still represents Buell as much today as he did yeah. back then. Yeah. Well, Austin is one of my favorite surfers in town. And He's again, a good kid another too. nice kid, like another arrow in your quiver mm -hmm. that you have in this town. I was always told, own your backyard. The world will come to you if you own your backyard. If you can't own your backyard, you're like illegitimate. And you are currently owning your backyard to a point that we're spilling over to the rest of the world. Which brings us right back to O'Neill because they've owned. Not only this town, but they've owned the wetsuit world mm -hmm. for years. So just having a cross town, like almost site to look at yep. and have that ambition. Like I never thought we'd be in a position where they'd even take us seriously as a threat. Right. Right. They've, you know, from BK, all the guys at O'Neill, they've always seemed like almost like they're rooting for us because we have always been the underdog. And, uh, you know, now we're across the street from them and kind of natural born rivals to some extent. Friendly, love those guys. They're love what they're doing. They're looking in your window. They're looking in our window mm. and and we're making sure we're watching kind of, you know, they're what they're doing. Window. But I think I think we're, you know, we're leading the charge and uh, they got 
they got a good program still, and uh, I, I love the challenge and the competition. Yeah. Well, it makes sense that a wetsuit company would live where water is cold. You know, they've made because, this the place to design right wetsuits. because a bunch of these wetsuit companies really only care about board shorts. So bullshit on them. Uh, let's let's support the brands that wetsuits are the most important part of your equipment. Yeah, you shouldn't be designing you know? wetsuits in Hawaii is what you're saying? I'm saying that, yeah. I'm saying it. So, uh, more power to you. Um, Neil, show. great show. But, uh, go ahead, TC. No, finish it up. I want to say, uh, I saw you at that party the other day, and he was over there eating taco. And I, I, I go, that's Ryan Buell. Let me go say hi. And when I, I went up to you and said to you, and this, this pertains to you too, that I walked up to you and I said, you know what, Mr. Buell, I said, I'm very proud of you for what you've done. You know, the last, since you come out of the garage, when you're making these videos out of your garage, to what you're doing now. And I just walked up to him and said, I didn't ask him to come on the show. I mm -hmm. asked him like two minutes later. But I said, you know what, I was very proud of you for what you've done. My story was funnier, but it was uh, way yours funnier. is more hard. And for, UTC, and, I, yeah. and for UTC with this store, I'm very proud of you. Oh, hey, you're nice. my dear friend and yeah. what you've done here and what you're going to do at Capitola. Oh. And what you both do for this community is incredible. So I want to thank you both. Right. Well, thank you, Neil. Welcome, Appreciate buddy. that. And to Mr. I Buell. I hug you. you know, right now. Group hug. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Congrats. I really appreciate it. No, I did. I just, I, just, well, I do. The guy that showed up at uh, Hotline Wetsuits and was like, yeah, you're in charge, and we're not going to teach you to where you are today. Amazing, yeah. Um, and the contributions to this community. I hope people see that. You know, that's, in, in my it's opinion. It's important to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we both try very hard to support our community without the fanfare that comes with it for our love of our community. And I uh, applaud you for that. I hope you have great success. Uh, Neil, next week on the show? Uh, Dr. Gail Newell. Oh, our so health local uh, Senator's health officer. See what's going on. Coming back. See where we're standing. And then we're going to have some music next week. I think and she's, she's bringing the missus. She's bringing the missus. And maybe next to music next week, too. Okay, I love that. Okay. One last shout out. Yes. I'd like to shout out my man, Matt Rockhold. He built this team. And I just want to throw you some love. My yeah, man. Rocky. Great yeah, store, Rocky. TC. And the address is? Uh, 201 Capitola Avenue, right here in the village. Brand right new store. It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Come down and check it out. It's opening very, we'll very soon. We'll see everybody next week. Ryan Buell, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.